The word baptism can be confusing. And so I'd rather go to another translation in the English, which is immersion. Okay, immersion. Um, as a matter of fact, when we were looking at some properties recently, one of the people we were talking to that was one of the owners of the property said their child was going to Spain where they were going in a Spanish immersion program. Okay, where they were going to learn the language quickly because they were going to be completely immersed in a place where they were going to have to learn the language quickly. Okay? So immersed has to do with being filled and, and surrounded by and just overflowing with. So you're immersed, just like going fully in the water. If you go under the water, you're immersed in the water. And so what Yochanan was talking about was that there was one that was coming. He says, I immerse you in water, but there's one coming who's going to immerse you in the Ruach HaKodesh and in fire. All of us, I think, pretty much can claim a redemptive moment, okay, where you feel like you were you call it saved back in the Christian church or you were redeemed or you came and were delivered out of ignorance. You came to understand there was a Messiah. You came to understand there was forgiveness of sin. So there's a the redemptive moment. It's like coming out of Egypt. You're learning that there's a difference between the way the world did things and the way that the creator would have things done. You learn there was a right way and a wrong way. There was already hints at this. He said, if you don't obey, you're going to be punished. These are punishments. But... These punishments are meant to get you to start to obey. So really, in a sense, they're trials of fire. And verse 23 makes the point crystal clear. So you know when a parent says, I'm going to teach you a lesson? In other words, you're going to, you need, what did you learn from that, right? Parents say that, and they may punish you and say that this is to teach you something. Punishment to teach. You know, what am I supposed to do with this constant thing getting worse and worse? Uh, why don't you ask Abba what you're not learning that you're supposed to be paying attention to? He says, I'm trying to instruct you by these. So when you're going through your baptisms of fire, when you're being immersed in fire, when you're receiving, you're reaping what you sowed, which essentially can be the same thing, ask him, Abba, what am I supposed to be getting instructed in in this? What are you showing me in this? In the first century, it was understood that when you came under a teacher, it was like, because, like you know, when you take cattle and you, and you actually put a yoke on them to pl pull the plow? Okay, and you're guiding the cattle, but you have them yoked so that you can steer them and guide them? That, that you were taking on the teacher's yoke. This is first century discipleship language. Okay, this is commonly understood, this idea of a yoke as being taking on the instructions of the teacher. Which then we get to Matthew 28, where he says, go out and disciple nations. He doesn't say go out and baptize nations and just, and just make them do altar calls. He says, go and make disciples of them. And then in the discipleship process, they would mikvah and be immersed in water and then in the spirit and then in fire. But make disciples of them. Look for ones who are willing to put on a yoke and listen and follow and be instructed. To be led and guided by one who actually has already been led and guided. The yoking phrase is talking about instruction. It's a discipleship phrase. Do not be unequally yoked with it. Why would you be discipled by an unbeliever is what he's saying. Why would you be discipled by an unbeliever? Why would you yoke yourself and then be having to be basically together, you're yoked, so the yoke is on both you and the other person, and so one goes, the other goes. And if they're stronger, guess who's going to win out? Sometimes you have to wonder why the world is such a mess and Yahweh allows it, because we have to see the result of our thoughts. I think at the end, he's going to run the videotape, okay? We don't do have videotape anymore. We have DVDs and all that. He's going to play the movie, because the world is going to have the world's opinions going to say, well, if you just left us alone long enough, we'd have figured it out. Really? That's why it has to be until the end where if he didn't intervene, no flesh would be saved alive. And he's got to play the tape and say, see, I got out of the way for the most part and let you to your own. And this is what you guys accomplished. This is the fruit of your thoughts. So we have an opportunity now to do it his way now. 
He's screaming at us out of the book and begging us, please. When I say screaming, I mean like screaming for appealing to us, not just screaming, yelling. He's saying, please, we should just do it my way. It works. I know. I made the system. I created the system. I know what works. Why do you think you're smarter than me? I built the thing. You are designed to be Torah observant. You were designed in, to walk in the Torah life. The Torah was put into the world to be lived and you were created to live in the world based on Torah. By the way, never, ever, ever, I'm going to say this again, never, ever, ever tell anybody else that what's happening is because they brought it upon themselves. That's only for you. You are not to tell anybody else that you think, oh, well, well what did you do? You must have done something. You, you are not qualified to determine time and chance. Better to let go of that thing. I don't care if it's your daughter or your mother or your sister or your brother or your son or your cousin or your best friend or some stuff or a job or whatever it is or a house. What's your price? But you don't understand, Rabbi. I, you're right, I don't understand. Yahweh doesn't understand either why you would put more preference on that than on what's coming. Because most of these people that give you grief, most, don't really have a relationship vertically like they may think they have or may even expound that they have. Because if they truly had that kind of relationship and knew how important that relationship is, they would respect that you're doing the same thing. You just see things differently than they do. But you're trying, because you see it as being that important, you're trying to be right vertically. And that should be respected even if it's not a, you know, what you prefer. Even, I may not like it, but I have to respect it. And that's why I encourage mixed marriages to, for one spouse to say to the other spouse, look, I know you want me to respect where you're at in terms of your spiritual life. I would love it if you would please give me the same respect. I know we're not on the same page right now, but I need you to respect that we are where we are. Authority comes through voluntary submission. To have a good authority in your life, you have to voluntarily submit to it. And then if you voluntarily submit to it, that authority can correct you. And so what he's saying in Leviticus 26 over and over again is, if you do not voluntarily submit to me, then you will not understand my correction and you're going to force me to correct you some more and correct you some more. And hopefully at some point, all those smacks in the head will wake you up and say, oh, I'm doing this to myself. <laughs> Duh. See, we are reading a book here where now we're reading from Paul who learned from Yeshua. We're reading from James who learned from Yeshua. So it's, and Yeshua who learned from the Father. We're going down the layers, right? You're learning from me who's reading from Paul who's reading from you. You see, it, go, it should go straight down. But if you don't see the teacher in the one teaching you, I mean, in other words, that teacher's teacher, then why are you under that, that teacher? In other words, if you don't see Yeshua in Paul, you don't see Yeshua in James, you don't see Yeshua in any of the disciples, why would you listen to the disciples? If you don't see the Father in the Son, why would you listen to the Son? So if you don't see Yeshua in what I'm teaching, if I'm not teaching you to be like him and you don't see his instruction flowing through, then don't listen to me. Why would you listen to me? The work may get burned up, but if you're, if you're willing to learn the lesson, you will get delivered and can still move forward if you get the lesson out of it. That's what he's saying in verse 15. If you get the lesson out of it, you will be saved, but the work will be burned because it's supposed to be proving what's going on. Man, look, Satan serves a great purpose for the Almighty. If you find yourself in a Satan-generated, you know, fiery trial, Abba's allowed that to happen to use it to test you in some way just like he did with Job. So don't get all upset about, you know, Hasatan getting involved in your life in some way. Make sure that you're using what's needed to quench the fiery fire. This is the armor of Elohim in Ephesians 6. It talks about these things are to quench the fiery arrows. If you look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the son of Eloah was with them, it said, in the fire. He said there was one looking as if it was like the son of man, Right? The fourth one in the fire. But understand that the son of Eloah, or the son of, the son of Yahweh, is with you in the midst of the fire if you make the stand in obedience. They stood in obedience, and in that fire, he was with them. But they stood in obedience. 
So let's try to really understand and embrace as we kind of wrap up this teaching on the baptism of fire that there's the process. We get immersed in water. Yes, that's the beginning. We come to realize we're wrong and, we need, and we're dirty and we need to get clean and bury the old man and make a change. Remember, the water baptism was change of status. Okay, washing, clean, cleansing, and change of status. And then we get this immersion in the spirit where we immerse ourselves and we're immersed in the understanding of Messiah and the truth and the Torah and the light and the way and the life. And then it gets tested in the baptism of fire where we get immersed through fire to see what the work is that we're doing. What kind of work is it? Is it going to stand or is it going to burn up? (laughs) 